Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast with Benji Nice. And today we're going to be talking about the Koenig Quick Step for 2021. We'll review, just like with the other season preview podcasts for the teams, we'll review what they did in 2020 briefly, maybe compare that to previous seasons, and then we'll look at their transfers in and out, who's up for out of contract in 2021, which Spoiler alert, is basically the whole team, as is the De Kooning Quick Step way. And then we're going to decide what are sort of the main priorities for them, what are the question marks over the team, and then Benji and I will give you our team lists for all of the monuments and all three of the Grand Tours, noting that this is an Olympic year, which can affect things. How are you going, Benji? Give me a temperature update in West Flanders in early January. I don't know. I just woke up, so I haven't even opened my window yet. <laughs> but I, I know it's frozen last night, and that's because my my dad just told me. And outside of that, I don't know. I'm not going outside today, so I guess I will never know today. <laughs> yeah, we had a cold snap here on the Gold Coast as well. It's been down to it's 24, 23 during the day, and a bit rainy. Cold snap, 24, yeah, cold 23. Snap. Yeah. <laughs> That's my hottest day of the winter. <laughs> That's literally, if that happens, I'm not sure they'd hold Flanders in those conditions. They'd say extreme <laughs> extreme weather protocol, it's 15 degrees too hot. Anyway, we're already off topic. Let's do the transfers first, Benji. Not too many, actually, for Quick Step. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, they renewed a lot of the guys from uh, that were already on the team um, who are out of contract. I remember... Maybe there was like a month period where everyone seemed to be out of contract or like 10 riders and then Lefebvre, it just dripped through. He's like, yeah, he's renewed, he's renewed, he's renewed. In- incoming is obviously Mark Cavendish. He got his own podcast about that. Uh, if you want to check out our thoughts on that signing in full, we're not going to rehash that too much here. Go and check out that podcast. And Joseph Cherny from CCC has come over as well, the only other rider to go to Quick Step. What do you make of Cherny, Benji? Just won that Giro stage, but this he won the famous um, protest stage, right? Yes, he did. And Cherny is this kind of rider that is good at these third week Rolly Hills time trials and Grand Tours. Pretty good at those Velta TTs and such. And I think next to that, he can offer a lot outside of time trials, but CCC never really went into that too deeply. I don't know what Cherny's personal goals are in life. I don't know if he wants to all-out focus on time trial, or if he wants to venture into being a role for someone else as well during his year at the Koenig here. But I think he's he would be a good domestique. And he also seems to be the kind of rider, when it comes to build and such, that should be doing well at a cobble race. But I can't really find too many in his history. He did Kuhn vs. in 2020, not with amazing results. And... Outside of that, yeah, Universal Kuhner last year as well. Universal Kuhner 2018 seems to be on his menu as well. So, yeah, it seems like he hasn't dipped his toes fully into cobble races yet, and I'd love to see Cherny do that just to have a bit of a taste to uh, to what he can do there because on paper, when it comes to his build and his weight and such, that should be perfect for that kind of race. I don't know where the quick step have signed him for, as you said, be a helper in the cobbles, whether they want him to go to some of like the three-day races that might have a time trial in it, see how he can go in GC. I think he's good at those sort of races, but there's not many of them. Whether they want him to hunt stages in Grand Tours or whether they think he can be an engine for one of their riders who might be going for the general classification in a Grand Tour or a one-week stage race. So I don't actually know. I don't have a good handle on what quick stepper having their plans for Cherny, but I think he's a good signing. I don't think he would have been too expensive at all coming from CCC. And, yeah, there's a lot of upside to that 27-year-old. But 2021, these are the expiring contracts. I'm going to read them all out as quickly as I can. <laughs> Mark Cavendish, Julian Alphilippe, Stieber, Sam Bennett, Trey Stevenens, Florian Seneschal, Mirku, Peter Seri, Matteo, Mat- Mattia Cataneo, Fabio Jakobsen, Masnara, Askren, Cavagna, Kaiser, Ballerini, Hodge, sorry, Hodge, Tim de Klerk, Bert van Leeberger, Juan Almeida, Cherny is on a one year deal, James Knox, the young Brit, Bajoli, 
Mikkel, Honoré, Yannick Steinler, Shane Archbold, the Kiwi Flying Mullet, Stein Steels, and Ian Garrison are all the expiring contracts at Quick Step. So, it's crazy. I mean, it just goes to show that's how Quick Step run their team. Short deals, I think, low base. Uh, not not minimum, but low low base for guys, and then uh, incentives is where they look for. If you're a rider, you, that's where you look to get your money. Um, not just from winning races. If your teammate wins a race, you also get paid uh, a little bonus as well. Who do you think out of that list, Benji? Who is at risk of not getting renewed? I don't like saying it, but. I'm scared for Jakobsen. I don't know what he can prove in in this year after his injury, and I hope they are a bit human when it comes to his contract because I don't believe in the full resurrection of Jakobsen sprinting in just one year after the accident. It might take a longer time, and if it takes a longer time, then I hope they they give him that time because, well, I hate it when someone gets injured in a team and then they get thrown out of the team after two years because they... Their injury has, well, removed their ability to sprint at their fullest. Of, yeah. At Jay, their McCarthy. Fullest, so. Jay McCarthy yeah. on Bora blew out his knee yeah. at the Vuelta and he's out of contract and he's not got a contract for 2021. That's one of the ones I'm I'm scared about. Outside of that, we got to look at the older people. I, um, I think the likes of um, Amari Cavendish will be difficult. Depends on his 2021 20, uh, season. But I also just genuinely think that Mark Cavendish is going to decide to dis- properly decide his own stop so that his stop doesn't get decided for him. We saw at Bahrain that his finish of his career was being decided for him until the Koenig stepped in and took him on. So the way he can get ahead of that is figuring out when he wants to stop for himself and put that in in stone so that he can prepare for that so that they can have a bit of a gala about it and stuff like that so i don't think cavendish is going to be at the curling the year after as well unless he starts winning crazy stuff which i honestly doubt quite a bit hutch is one i'm extremely unsure about because hutch has not been very good recently and i think the last times where he was actually properly good was before his accident as well because he, uh, he had a sprint there and rode into a barrier at some point. One of those barriers with those, uh, with those shady feet. And um, since then, I haven't really seen a proper sprint from him, which is a bit sad. He got a podium at one sprint stage at the Giro, and outside of that, no real proper results. He got murdered by Milano at the Tour of Colombia in 2020. San Juan, top four. Nothing better than that. His last he's victory not getting, was... He's not getting renewed. I don't know. Yeah, I, think, he, I, think, I think he's in real he trouble. Back. He, he's in yeah, real I trouble, well. I think. Uh, I, I think what I do you do with older people? Well, with Kaysa. Kaysa, 38, Dries Stevenens. The thing is, Kaysa came second in the Belgian national champs. Dries Stevenens sure. was my best domestique in the world in 2020. And, yeah, yeah you, might, you might be saying I'm overrating him a little bit, but still – He's got to be in the top five somewhere. You look what he was doing in Lombardia for Evenepoel and what he can do in the Ardennes, etc. Yeah. for Alaphilippe. I mean, if he just maintains his level or is even 95% of it, I would still be giving uh, Davinens another deal. Yannick Steimler's improving a lot. I don't think he's in too much trouble. Bagioli, Honore, Honore is re- he's going to get renewed or a better deal yep. elsewhere. He's, he's really good. He's a rider that... Mark it down in your little black books before all your friends know about him. He's legit. Go and look at the uh, Agrigento stage in the Giro where he was with Ulysses and Sagan. He's really good. Shane Archibald, I think, is in trouble. Um, the Kiwi, I think, I'm not sure if he had many race days last year. And a, a rider who's not in trouble per se, but I think there's already been rumors about him leaving is Joao Almeida. Where does he fit in this team? Is it too crowded with Evenepoel and Julian Alaphilippe? I mean, if you're Almeida and you can command 750k plus at a UAE, maybe not now they've got, if her, here she goes there, still no news on that, by the way, or somewhere else, if you can command a big, big salary at another team base and 
if the De Koenig model for you getting paid is through incentives, but there's all this crowd at the top who you're then being asked to ride for, it doesn't really work if I'm Almeida. So I think, and this will get into the Grand Tour squads we would pick later, but I think Almeida better get some opportunities for himself in 2021. Otherwise, they, you know, he'll be out the door unless they decide to give him a big contract, which doesn't seem yeah, to be. Um, Wait, what do you think? So um, the, a little backstory for people that don't know. So the new rider agent of Almeida is the rider agent, well, the player agent of Cristiano Ronaldo in football. And, well, as a consequence, he is likely going to be asking more in the future. And the Koenig is not actually the team that has a lot of budget despite well, they've got more budget than the average World Tour team, but they don't like spending it too much. The favorite is a guy that says, this is the max we do, and we don't go above it. If you want more than that, then yeah, I'm, I'm afraid you'll have to look for a place in another team. There's only a few exceptions where you would actually go across that line and be like, this ride is worth it to do that. And I think Almeida is not crossing that line. And with an Avena pool, I think that's more likely because, well, Belgian, Belgian sponsor, the hand stuff like that. I think by Ineos. Yep. So, um, yeah, even if is that example, that they would do that, Almeida likely not. And, yeah, I think one of the reasons is plainly that he's not Belgian. And with a Belgian team, that's going to matter a lot. If he would be, like, miles above the rest in races that he rides, then they would probably consider it. He rode very well at the Giro, definitely. He's got a bright future ahead but if this Cristiano Ronaldo rider agent guy starts asking so much more money than they are currently doing the favorite is not going to say yes at all cost and Almeida will likely be at a different team in 2022 to be honest so Almeida I'm really high on him I think he's really really good I mean that's not a hot take but if you're Lefebvre and you've got this new agent coming to you from football who's like give our boy 1.2 1.2 million euro I'm <laughs> Lefebvre I turn around and say hey get a pro win first Almeida <laughs> doesn't have a pro win now that is being a bit I guess that's a simplistic way to look at these things 15 yeah. days in pink fourth that's in how pink, it works though euro. but that's also the reality of it you know if you want to get the big big money you've got to put wins on the table fit first and yeah, I mean that's again. If he where's he going to get those opportunities in twenty twenty one? That's what I'm think. I keep thinking about where is Almeida going to get the opportunities for big big wins in twenty twenty one? He won Liège twenty eighteen under twenty three. I mean all those. I think he could go stage hunting to great effect if he got the license too. Um, but he should leave yeah. through the front. Okay, we'll set. We'll talk settle, about it later. Settle down. That's outrageous. All right. But maybe it's not. We'll hear your justification later. Um, so that's all from the the riders who we think uh, who, who are out of contract this year. I mean, I think a lot of them will be re-signed, probably 80% of them, and then the others will depend on performance throughout the year. But let's review quickly their 2019, uh, 2020 season, rather. A weird season, and it's harsh to it's it's hard to be too critical on a team, especially to Koenig, who are number one on PCS uh, ranking. They got thirty nine wins in the condensed and uh, abridged twenty twenty season, but I don't think even accounting for the race cancellations, it was not as good as their twenty nineteen season, in my view. Yeah, a lot of those wins were Santos Tour down under Cadell's. I mean Cadell's. Avenen's one, but Velta San Juan. Then obviously, uh, Avenapol destroyed all the one week races he did, which was Algarve, Burgos, and Polonia. But apart from that, they won a Vuelta stage and I think three Tour de France stages, so four Grand Tour stages. They didn't win a stage of the Giro. They did have 15 days in pink with Almeida, but the Classics results, well, they didn't get a monument. So 20, it's hard to, you know, comparing to 2019, they won Roubaix. They won, I think, seven or eight Grand Tour stages. And obviously we had three Grand Tours in 2020, just like we did in 2019. San Remo? San right. Remo as well, with <laughs> Julian Alaphilippe. That being said, 
I, I think Alaphilippe got even better in 2020. I think he as a all around rider, uh, and it was still obviously a fantastic season. But I'm expecting them to do actually a bit better in in 2021. To be honest, I'm expecting some massive results from them, and I'll get into that in, in a second. Read the Grand Tours. But what did you make of their 2020 season, Benji? About a par performance standard quick step, like if you have to average it compared to maybe the the past 10 years back to 2010. I think you're completely right in every aspect of what you said. You have, firstly, the uh, one. <laughs> He's taking credit for that. <laughs> that sentence will be on his wall. <laughs> but um, the first three-ish months of the year, four months perhaps, you had Remco Evenepoel winning all these one-week races. He's basically setting up the perfect start to the season. And... He's beating world-class competition in those races. In Polonia, he started beating the competition that he would be facing in the Giro. And all these races are being brought in by Evenepoel. Then you have some victories left and right by Sam Bennett, Jakobsen doing decent in sprints, and also some of the other riders, Bajoli winning that through the last stage. You have Davide Ballerini showing that he can sprint. Uh, I think Archibald won some one race as well, New Zealand then see, but yeah, that's not overly important for the Koenig, I think. Just in, in general, the entire start of the season lacked one thing for me, and I think you said it already, classics. They had Kuno Vesel Kuno with Kasper Asgren, and outside of that, they had second places, third places, fourth places, but you don't buy anything with a second and third place. Definitely not in a classic. Nobody remembers who got third in Omlop and Nisblad last year. I don't, at least. Perhaps other people do. Um, regarding the... Um, Tour of Flanders, Nicky that's Tour a bit of a in difficult one. In came third. <laughs> that's one we'll remember. <laughs> um, yeah, in, uh, in Tour of Flanders, we obviously can't really blame them because yeah, true. well, that's true. It's a bit of a yeah, it's a bit of a shitty situation to ride out the back of a motorbike. Again, my opinion was that it was not the motorbike's fault, but. We won't get into that right now. That's way too controversial to, to dive into again. And um, I just feel like they have an issue now because Fanad and Van der Poel are just leading so well in these Gobble Classics that it's going to be extremely difficult in the coming years to counter that effect. They're going to need to open up races very early to try and get those three riders behind and have a smaller group with the likes of, I don't know, the way they did Gilbert at Tour of Flanders a few years ago. That kind or, of system. Or what they did in Ken Vavelheim with Seneschal attacking with Pedersen. And then yep, I think that's Pedersen a good example. Beat him just in the sprint. Um, but that's yeah, the but way. This, that will all depend on whether Van der Poel and Van Aert start going around again. And I think they need to find a way to tactically beat them because otherwise it's going to be really difficult. For not disadvantages that his team is weaker on the goals. He's got young riders that are coming up in, in Jumbo that might help him there. Van der Poel, yeah, he's got a stronger and stronger team as years go by. So it's only going to get harder for the Koenig to start beating those two riders at those races unless those two riders have a bad season, which is always possible. But it's a bit more unlikely. But we're talking about the Koenig here. I think classics are going to be troublesome this year as well in 2021. I think it's going to be really hard to perform there but i think they've got so much more in regards to in comparison to the past in gc stuff now because they didn't have gc stuff they had one year of iran in 2012 something like that and recently since alaphilippe in that tour de france he can do a bit of gc almeida showed in the giro that he can do gc but m quavenapol is destined for greatness when it comes to gc we just haven't seen it yet so let's hope we can see it this year because yeah, it's it's very uh, intriguing. <laughs> I think, now, um, see, I just I, I think they're going to come back and win a lot of races, a lot of one day races in 2021. I think a lot of random things sort of went against them. If you look at look at it, the results just on paper, like Alaphilippe's big big win was the World Champs, which doesn't really count for De Kernick. He has the Liège sort of disaster as well as the Tour of Flanders crash. Uh, he won Brabantje Pale. He beat Van der Poel in a 
heads up sprint with Cosnerfoy there. They were on, I mean, the Three Ducks Brug the Pan race, which uh, Lampard won. No one was watching that except, I think, me and you, Benji, because it, I think that was on during the Vuelta, and everyone was just so sick of cycling at that point. Yeah. Um, that, and fatigued by it that no one was watching. <laughs> but they were, they looked like they normally did there and they rolled Vanderpool. And, yeah, I think they'll be fine, to be honest, in, in the one-day races. And they're just going to be even better than ever before in the one week. Because, as you said, I forgot to mention – and also, Alaphilippe didn't even contest Flesh, where he's been the best in the world for the last few years because he just won the world champs because of the weird season. Yep. So, again, Amstel Gold didn't exist where they usually – very competitive. What I want I forgot to mention, by the way, with the transfers, Bob Jungles, their Swiss Army knife from Luxembourg, he's the rider the probably the biggest name rider that's left, gone to Ajdual and Mondial. Do you think before we we get into who we'd pick in the various teams, Benji, uh, do you think they'll miss Jungles? Do you think they've they were right to let him go if Ajdual offering him offering him big money? I mean, he hasn't won a race, a big race except a national champs ITT at Luxembourg since Kerner, Brussel Kerner in 2019. Um, I don't think they've made a mistake letting him go. I don't think so either. I do think that he can offer a lot for Ajazer. I think he was able to offer a lot for the Koenig, but also I don't think it's going to damage their, their affairs too much. What I think about Jungles is that it's a rider that has been searching for what he can do for years now, and I feel like he still really hasn't found it. He started off trying to go for GC in the past. Didn't really work out the way he was hoping to. Then he went into a Hill Classics. He won LBL in a solo fashion, which was pretty crazy. But outside of that, he ain't going to win Fledge Wallon or a race like that unless he gets some really lucky solo in from earlier on or a really powerful one. Doesn't need to be lucky for that sake. And that's more like it's more unlikely that he, he can win other Hill Classics too much. And then if we look at the cobble race as well, he can he can do it, but there's so many people that can do it in the same way. So it's kind of a rider that is good at everything, but hasn't mastered one thing. And because of that, he's unable to get too much prices in one area. He gets one race there, he gets one race there, he gets one race there in the span of three, four seasons. And that's not enough for the Koenig, I think. I think they need... For the money that I think Jungles is being paid, he needs to offer a bit more. And that's why I think it's a good choice to let him go. And definitely, since it won't really hurt their their team too much, I think he just wanted too much money for the favor's sake at the end of the season. And he was unwilling to give him that. That's probably my take on it. I mean, yeah, if you're the favor, you probably say, hey, why am I going to pay this guy six times what I'm paying three Stevenins to just be a domestique in the Hill Classics for Alaphilippe. Like, it's it doesn't really make sense to do that. They they got a lot of riders who can do what Jungles can do or what I'd expect them to do in 2021. Um, and he'd also be taking away a spot from a lot of these. Let, let me read out some of the riders that Koenig have under 25 years old because they have a young squad. Joao Almeida, Casper Askren, still 25, Bagioli, 21, Cavagna, 25, Avonapol, 20, Ian Garrison, Hodge, Honore, Jakobsen, James Knox, who else? Yannick Steimler and a man that Benji's probably got a bit more insight into, Maori Van Savanant, who I think, did he do a long breakaway in Liège or Flesh, Benji? He's the he's the rider that was about to solo in flesh until he fell in one of the uh, corners and like kept holding his bike in the bushes. That's the meme. <laughs> um, that's Mauri von Sevenant, and that's never going to get out of my mind. But what Mauri von Sevenant has when it comes to history is the fact that he was good in some Giro U23 race. I think it was Mont Blanc Val d'Aost. He ended up winning that. But I also recall the. Um, the uh, bro, the peloton riding the wrong way and he taking a lot of time because of that. So I'm not sure how valuable that victory was. I can't tell you because I generally haven't seen that race. And I just know he's got talent when it comes to climbing. He was also second in the mountain stage, I think, behind Harald Tejada and ahead of Sean Poussin. 
into the Lavanier in 2019. So he's a future climber. I just don't know how good he is. I guess we'll find out in the future. He was strong in that Flesh Wallon. He wrote everything in the breakaway to pieces. And every single hill, he started mashing it to put a little more seconds into the peloton. And at some point, I was thinking, this man is going to solo victory, Flesh Wallon, until he was on the floor. So that's when it started turning uh, differently. But I really thought seeing that race that he had it was a crazy race. Let's go through first their Cobbled Classics squad. And, I mean, we'll talk about, this is the the first interesting topic, but let's combine Roubaix, Omloop, Tour of Flanders, and Le Semin, etc. Actually, that's not correct because they'll send a different squad to the second-year Cobbled Classics. The, The premium Cobbled races, let's keep it simple, Flanders, Roubaix, and who are they sending to those races? I've got Steimler, Van Leerberger, and Seneschal for Flanders. I still have Alaphilippe going again next year despite potential crash issues. I mean, it, it was easier for the GC guys to go in 2020 because of where it was placed. Asgren... Who am I missing, Benji? You, you you fill out the rest. You're the, the classic specialist. So like you say, Asgren would be one of the riders I put in. I would also be looking at... The Clerc. Uh, what's his name? Tim the Clerc, for sure. Yves Lampard. Um, those three. I think Ilio Case is likely going to be in the team just because of his team captain capabilities. Yeah. So that's four riders. You already said it. I put... Yannick Steimler in there because I think he has a future in there as well. He won Brussels Cycling Classic in 2019. So he has capabilities of riding over cobbles despite that being a bit of a sprint race recently. He um, has the engine, that's for sure. I don't know how far Stan Stills can bring it, but I think he was also RVV-like when it comes to his capabilities. And then you start looking at the second degree of riders which is something that is perhaps different from previous years because... Well, and also, before, before we you, get there, yeah, I think, I think what you were saying about they'll struggle in the cobbled classics is because in a head-to-head sprint, it's difficult to imagine that Seneschal is going to be beating Mathieu van der Poel and Wout van Aert. And yeah. the team we just read out there, he's going to be their leader. At Henvevelhem and Paris-Roubaix, Seneschal would probably be their best rider and the rider they'd be riding for. We saw that last year. And I'm, he, I'm not sure he's going to be beating Mads Pedersen in a – well, he didn't in a heads-up sprint. Pedersen is <laughs> – even the, like Pedersen's so quick as well. So it's yep. so competitive in those races. And I remember even that video I put up of Van der Poel against Van Aert back in like 2017, um, they beat – they even beat Seneschal back then. He was in the finish, but just wasn't quite good enough. And I think they're missing, obviously, he's a special talent, but they're missing someone like Bonin. They don't have that rider in their classic squad yes. anymore. Um, but I guess they're going to have to adopt some sort of just what worked in Herrn Wevelhem, just get multiple riders. And Dri Daxa, Brugge de Panda, they, they got like five riders into the first echelon and then just rolled it and then attacked over and over again with Lampard and then blocked, which is how they, why they're so strong and, and good. I think, you know who they should have offered a, big con, a bigger contract is someone like Tim Merlier um, or, or maybe someone like that. I mean, because Alpes and Phoenix now are their main competition, in my view, for best overall classic squad. And so, yeah, I would have been trying to poach someone like that, although I haven't checked his, his contract his contract length. Who do you think is going to surprise and overperform in in their classic squad? Or do you think it's going to be, they're just going to be getting a lot of thirds, fourths, and fifths? Well, I think they're going to get a lot of third, fourths, and fifths. I think we're going to see Lampard back as a, as a wow, back at his capabilities from before the, um, I think it was collarbone accident in 2020. But I think the biggest, not necessarily a surprise, but move forward in these couple races is going to be Kasper Asgren. He won Kuhnberg's Kuhnberg last year. 
I um I trust him more than Seneschal, honestly. I think Seneschal is more fitting for Paris Roubaix. I think Gasgrain is more fitting for Tour of Flanders. And I um I just believe in Osgrain. I don't know why, but that rider has the capabilities of riding solo. He has won California, a mountain stage, and ended up winning the GC there. And that's obviously not going to help him do with the cobbles, but he's so like intertwined in all his capabilities and that allows him to do random stuff and surprise that way. And he's got such a big engine that I think he could be soloing away at some point and then they're going to be like who's going to chase because then Van Aert and Van Der Poel is going to be in the same group and they're going to look at each other and at a certain point they're going to probably start working but will it be too late in the race those kind of situations happen and I think Osgreen is perfect for those kind of situations they have to if they want to get the most success out of the cobbled races they should take Avon a pole and the problem is that early on like Omloop's not that far away the guy mm. broke his leg really badly. And just because, just tactically, Jumbo Visma have a really weak cobbled team relative to the like generational talent of Wout van Aert. So that's the weakness, right? Alpes and Phoenix, they're actually really strong. Like they got Jonas Ricard, David <laughs> van der Poel, etc. <laughs> they're a really strong all round team on the cobbles. But if you want to beat them, if you're quick step, I think you need to use Asgren, Lampard, and Avonapol as long range attackers to make races difficult for the entirety of the race rather than Flanders, where it seemed to be a slower pace for a lot of the race until there was the decisive moment that the three went clear. And so I think Avonapol, we saw what he did in Polonia. I we've seen what he did. Did he need didn't he? breakaway in Belgium tour I'm not sure if it was in the, on the cobbles or not back in like 2018 or something and he was like yo-yoing Campanas off his wheel on the flat I don't I don't see why he wouldn't be effective on on the cobbles either um, to be honest so I think the um the biggest danger when it comes to Evenepoel is his unsurety when it comes to technique for me because we know that Evenepoel First of all, we know that he can ride cobbles because he's done it before. The hundred times he rode up up the um, Mürvan Herard's betting as, as a meme during the corona crisis. So um, he can ride on cobbles. I don't know how effective it's going to be in races. He would need to be um, already gone, I think, at a certain point in the cobbles to make it really effective because the issue with him is that every time I've seen him in a race that has the likes of gravel or something like that, he ended up crashing. So... Yeah, like I, I feel like he should be able to do it, but sometimes he proves it otherwise. <laughs> so it's hard for me to 100% say Avonpool could do cobble races. I need to see it first. To be honest, I probably wouldn't. That being said, unless they have some sort of confidence that he could do a, a crazy amount of race days in the season, I probably wouldn't send him to the classics, despite what I said, because he's better suited to the Ardennes. Yes. And he might be taking a tilt at the Giro and the Olympics. Do you really want to threaten that with crashing at Hen Vavel Hem or Omloop uh, in a wet, rainy day in February coming off an injury? Uh, so so it's probably unlikely we will we will see him lining up, but never say never. Yeah, uh, but he also um he also said in an interview, uh, I think it was a few years ago, two years ago or one year ago that when it comes to his style of rides, he would love to win a Grand Tour. That's like the top three things he wants to win, the Grand Tours. And another dream is winning liege Bastogne liege And he has a negative feeling about paris Bay. He doesn't like it. So either that's the cobbles or he just doesn't like that race. I think he doesn't like the danger of it, I think. Um, just an aspect I wanted to throw into this discussion as well, because, yeah, if he doesn't like it, he just doesn't like it. It's always possible that someone doesn't like a race. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we don't like lots of races like uh, flesh. Flesh we think is overrated, but anyway. <laughs> uh, Dan, actually, just before we move on, I think Al Philippe should be their favourite, and I think he's a race favourite for Tour of Flanders if he wanted to do it. Um, I think he's a just a special rider. Yeah. Showed that last year, and I don't see why he couldn't repeat that if he makes the split. You know, look at him in Brabantse Pale on each of the cobbled sections. He was animating the race, and Van der Poel was following him. So, 
athlete, if he wants to do it, should be one of their leaders at Flanders, and I'd be taking him very, very seriously. But moving on to his more natural terrain where he is the best Actually, in the world. Oh, sorry. Yep, go I'm on. going to go off topic for uh, one minute because earlier in the podcast we said that his shoe was not official yet. At this very second, it was announced that it is official just to throw that in there. Uh, and then we can continue onwards with the Koenig. <laughs> Wait, what's official? Yeah, it's official. He's going to UAE. Who, Alaphilippe? Uh, no, here she. Oh, here she's going to UAE. Yeah. Okay. Are we, Just... um... <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Why did they announce it four days later? Anyway, you can tell know. I'm not editing this out because I'm just, I'm not surprised. I'm just like, meh. I don't know why you guys didn't sort out the announcement at the time it was announced he was leaving DSM. Alaphilippe, yep. his natural terrain is obviously punching the best puncher in the world at the Ardennes. He's going to have the full complement, hopefully, in 2021 of Armstall, Flesh, Liège, Rabanchi Pale will be trying to defend there as well. I think with the World Champions jersey on his back, he's going to be so difficult to beat once again. Or, Benji, do you think there'll be more competition this year with Van der Poel and Van Aert at those races? Um, maybe it'll be even harder. I mean, Van Aert was at... Uh, was he at Liège? I can't remember. But do you think Van der Poel... He wasn't? Okay. So I think there'll be more competition for Alaphilippe. That being said, let me pick my who I would pick for those races. Alaphilippe, Almeida, Bagioli, Cavendish. Just kidding. Just kidding. Dre Savenens, Avenapol, Honoré, Knox maybe, but Masnada probably... Stiba, and I probably I probably haven't picked an engine in there. I probably need to pick a, an Asgren or someone. I've probably gone a bit too light um, for that team. But that's a really strong Ardennes squad. Like there's so many weapons there. Like Almeida, Alaphilippe, even a pole alone is very very strong. Um, and who knows what Bagioli and Honore could do themselves. Like they're really good as well. Uh, should, would you have put Cavanyar in there? Would you have him down as, as sort of a, a worker in that team? Uh, yeah, but there's also, um, I think, Seri. I'm not sure you named Seri. Uh, yes, sorry, Seri. Um, yes, Seri must be picked. He's one of the riders that I would definitely pick when it comes to these Hill Classics, and it's mainly because, well, in the Belgian National Championships, he was the strongest rider in the race by, uh, by a long shot that ended up crashing in one of the last corners, which was so sad to see and um eventually that is how that is the bond got away in that race because well said he crashed the rider he was with in the last few corners and then he was alone and he got up his bike and he i still came third i think so crazy man but um all in all i do believe that said he deserves a spot in that team I do agree with the rest of the names you brought in. I'm not sure about the engines so much because while a Cavanya and an Asgreen would be useful in that scenario, I don't think it's honestly overly necessary. I think Von Sevenand would be a nice addition to the yeah, Hill Classic race. He proved to be worth it in 2020. Obviously, that was a bit different with the calendars, but I'd put him in there. He deserves his chance after almost winning Flesh Wallon with a solo from the breakaway that's that's but it happened so um yeah it's a team that is honestly quite strong and we know Philippe should lead that i think he should i would not put almeida in these races and i would perhaps only put almeida in the lbl flesh Wallon, i don't think he can do anything i'm still and i'm still yeah the thing about amstel is do you want to put almeida in there knowing that He's likely going to focus on a Grand Tour afterwards. Why would he not be riding the likes of a, a Catalonia or Pei Vasco around that part of the season? That's what I'm thinking about because I think that's at the same same moment somewhat. I don't even know at this point. The calendar of last year is still mashed in my brain. <laughs> You're probably right. I mean, there's no need to double up. I think Almeida is is leader quality in a in a, even a Paris Nice maybe. I haven't looked at the Paranese profiles, just came out. i got to have a look at it, whether Almeida could do well there as well, or whether yeah, it's going to be, it's gonna be, he could do well there. Uh, it's going to really depend on 
what Avonapol does as well. But I think Avonapol and Alaphilippe match up really well. You've got Alaphilippe with the best one-minute power what's per kilo in the world and Avonapol who's an escape artist. So it puts a lot of pressure on other teams if like in Clásica San Sebastian or other races, Avonapol attack, can attack early and get away if he's set up on one of an er- on an earlier climb where someone of the quality of Masnada drives at Audrey Steven and drives a very, very hard pace. This applies to Lombardia as well, which they were trying to do for Avonapol. Drives a very hard pace early, gets Avonapol to attack, gets a gap, and then forces the other teams to chase while other Philippe can chill. Um, Maybe it's going to be a bit more complicated than that, but that'd be the general approach I would make to races. Maybe they don't even need to complicate that. Maybe you just ensure that the whole group stays together, hit the Kalberg, hit the Murderhui with Alaphilippe at the front of the group and drive it for him and happy days. He'll probably beat everyone. Um, but <laughs> who knows? I mean, they've got a lot of choices for the Ardennes. I think that's just probably almost the strongest part of their team. It is, In my view, it's the strongest part of their their roster is their one-day hilly classics is very, very strong. One-week races, again, incredibly strong. Avonapol won every one-week race he did last year. Almeida is certainly capable of winning a World Tour level one-week race himself. Masnada, like, honestly, depending on who goes to Torreno, it wouldn't surprise me if someone like Masnada won Torreno. I think he's also capable. Aww. I think he... <laughs> I know, like, oh. <laughs> listen, he's, it, it could happen. It's very – didn't – mate, Greg Van Avermaet won Torreno once. Well, the, the mountain stage got cut out that year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, this is 2021. It's as, just as crazy as 2020. A mountain stage getting cancelled for for bad weather is like not the most outrageous thing we might expect this year. <laughs> but, yeah, I take your point. Okay, so, Benji, who would you pick – for, for the Giro, who who would you take as a leader there, considering the Olympics are likely going to be a goal for Evan Apol? Knowing that the um, the current announced, it's not announced yet, the parkour of the Giro, but the current rumored parkour has two time trials, one being Verona again, which is 15-ish kilometers with perhaps one hill in it, perhaps no hills, and also one of 44 kilometers with an uphill section at the end, Perugia. Um, those are the two time trials that are being rumored at the moment. Then I would be picking Remco Evenepoel. The man can take six minutes on a land. I've land the right to Giro, which has been announced recently that he will. So yeah, Evenepoel is my leader for the Giro. I would not send him to the Tour de France, mainly because, well, you don't get all the, um, the random stuff that's going to be around with, oh, the quarantine two week stuff. Can he ride the Tour de France or not before the Olympics? Blah, blah, blah. I would be sending him to the to the Giro. I would not send Almeida with him or in support. Almeida in support would be fun, but at this age, I would I wouldn't let Almeida ride two Grand Tours in a row. So that's what ruins my idea here because my idea was to put Evenepoel in the Giro and Almeida in the Tour. And looking at this, I can't just put Almeida in the Giro as well to support Evenepoel because I don't trust the 22 year old in two Grand Tours in a row. And definitely not if he's going to try and lead the second one of that. So um, Why can't yeah. Almeida do Giro and then in recognition of his support for Avonapolt the Giro get co-leadership at the Vuelta? It's possible, but I just feel like the parkour of the Tour de France fits Almeida so well with these time trials, the only race stages that I'm not sure about, but we saw that he could relatively do were the ones above 2K altitude. He was decent on the Stelvio, definitely. He was not terrible there. Well, and he, really, he was able to secure. He was fine yeah. on the long climbs. It was just yeah. where altitude, he started to get dropped a little bit when Dennis was yeah. putting the pace down. And there's not as much altitude and not as high altitude in the Tour as the Giro last year, On yeah. which was the climb that Hinley went absolutely nuclear up. I want to go back and look at how much time Almeida uh, lost. Pianca Vallo. Pianca Vallo. So yeah. for reference, Jai Hindley on Pianca Vallo, which I'm struggling to find the exact stage that was, uh, he did a really, really hot pace on on that stage. And uh, I need to go back and check how much he, time he put into 
Almeida. But honestly, I would take because, because the thing is, Benji, it's not like he's going to get too much support at the tour. I think they're going to take Sam Bennett back to the tour. I mean, it's not a hot take. Sam Bennett's going to go back to the tour. He's going to go, I don't know about defending the green jersey, but he'll be going for stage wins. Philippe will be going to the tour. I think he's going to try and get the yellow jersey and hold on to it for as long as possible uh, with stage two finishing up Murder Britannia. So that, and then after that, he'll probably go for stage wins, Philippe. So I think they'll be in full stage hunting mode. Do you think it's worth it to just send Almeida then on his own pretty much or maybe with like one helper? to the tour Benji and see it to see how he goes. I would. Um, worst case scenario, he has to go for a stage at some point, which is probably still worth it. But knowing the likes of Nala Philippe, we know that Nala Philippe is going to try and ride the tour. That's for sure. If he can, he will ride the tour. What I'd love to see is Nala Philippe at the Vuelta personally. I don't know why, but Perhaps after the Tour de France, it's going to be really busy when he comes to the season if he starts doing that. So it's very unlikely. But it's the same story I made with Hirschi a few days ago um, on the Hirschi podcast that Hirschi would fit really well in the likes of a Vuelta because of his capabilities in multiple areas, mountain and punching, not necessarily punching alone. The guy is not a Gasparado. The guy is someone that can punch while going for GC. We saw it at the Tour de France in 2019 with Alaphilippe himself. So I think that the parkour, like a, a Vuelta parkour, would fit him really well and would offer him the ability to try that. Now, what we also haven't seen with Alaphilippe is him trying to go for one-week races when it comes to GC. So he obviously did so at Paris, but I'm looking at the likes of a Catalonia the same way as I said with Hirschi, we know that Hirschi is much younger than Alaphilippe, but is already near the level of Alaphilippe. So I think Alaphilippe is going to be um, having more and more trouble among the next few years with with Hirschi and might not be the best puncher in the world in a few years. So he's got to keep fighting for that position. And yeah, I, I just r- ran off <laughs> with, the, with the argument into a very different topic. But to the France team, I would definitely put Alaphilippe in there as well. Knowing that he's French, that's basically the only reason that I would fully put him in there. And knowing that he could get yellow early on, even though he's got lots of competition for that in that race. That is uh, my take on the tour when it comes to the teams surrounding him. So the best th- sprinter needs to go to the tour. What did you just say to me? Their best sprinter needs to go to the tour. Oh, I thought you said the best sprinter. <laughs> I thought I thought you thought I said that, but no. <laughs> so I would send Almeida to the Giro because a he can ah oh, Ganna's going to be there, so he can't go for the TT victory stage victories. But I think you've got to just fully commit to the Evenepoel Giro GC. I think with Almeida, they have a truly world class GC squad. Evenepoel Almeida. Cataneo, probably as well. Masnada, Honore, Knox is very, very good with three Steven ends or a couple of engines in there as well. I think that's a very, very strong GC squad. People were talking about, oh, well, Lefebvre needs to really think about how he's going to change this team and to get some GC riders in there or, or domestiques to help even a pole. They've already done that. Look at some of the Giro stages where there would be like three rider, three quick step riders pacing for Joan Almeida, uh, I think on the second stage yeah. that you obviously won in a group of like 15, they'd all made the split and created the split. So I think that was the one where Sagan was chasing back with Ballerini behind. Yep. I think you probably take Ballerini because he's Italian and he can look after himself maybe and say, hey, just – Go, go for sprints on your own. You're not going to get too much help except from maybe from like Dries Stevens or, or Seri or someone. But I think that they got a really, really strong GC squad and probably I'd have that as the best squad for the Giro depending on what Geraint Thomas does. I mean, maybe Thomas is looking at that Giro parkour and thinking that's a lot better for me, uh, particularly with Rowan Dennis and Ghana also doing the Giro. 
Tour de France, I already said it, Alaphilippe, Bennett, they're the focus. Um, and then I'd fill it with the usual guys of Cavagna who can go for breakaway stages, Cherny maybe as well as sort of etc. similar to the squad last year. Vuelta depends on the parkour as normal, but I think you would say that Almeida is, yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? Because it, it, it depends, Benji. If Almeida says, if he already announces, which he can do in August, right? If he announces that he's got a deal with UAE or someone else, then Quickstep, similar to the Warren Bargui situation with Sunweb with Kelderman in the Vuelta 2018 or 17, they're not going to probably give him leadership. It wouldn't make sense to at the Vuelta. Uh, so that's a tricky one and where the contracts will really play into who who gets picked in their Vuelta team. It might be the last chance for some of the riders. Like Stibar, he's 35 out of contracts. Uh, he's not maybe looked as strong in 2020 as he has previously, whether he can get a stage win at the Vuelta, etc. But, yeah, do you, I know you, you already said it, Benji, so I won't ask you to repeat it, but... You want Alaphilippe to go to the Vuelta. Yeah, but also, uh, I think one of the things that teams do with youngsters during their first or second season is sending them to their first Grand Tour. I think the likes of Amaury van Sevenand is likely going to ride his first Grand Tour this year in La Vuelta. And I think that's also something you need to take in mind when specifying a Vuelta team that places like that exist, those spaces for Neil Ian Pros Garrison. or the year after, yeah, Ian Garrison. Just in general, oh, we Kevin. have that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's going to win in Madrid, man. <laughs> I would actually, yeah, anyway. I, I, it would actually be beautiful if, if that did happen. In oh, all yeah. Yeah, it would. It would. Just for the memes. But yeah, you're right. There's a lot of spaces, particularly in the Vuelta, for spots like that. Okay, Benji, they won, I think, 69 races in 2019. It's not fair to compare 2021 because they didn't have as many races. I'm putting that over under at 2019 was a really, really good year for them as well. And there were some quality wins in there too. But I'm putting their over under at uh, 50, 50 wins for 2021, mainly because I think there will be, we've already seen. San Juan's been cancelled, etc. So maybe that's the, or even too high, but there'll be races cancelled. But 50 wins, do you think over or under for De Kearney Quick Quickstep? For me, while 69 wins would be very nice once again, I'm afraid it's not going to be like that. Regarding 50 over or under, I think I'm going to go with... They're going to hit 50 on the dot. <laughs> no, you can't, mate, that is not how betting works. You know this. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you missed the spot. <laughs> you need to either – sorry, they actually won 68 wins in 2019. I don't know why. Oh, uh, that's not very nice. So, but oh, you have to pick – oh, you're saying exactly 50. Well, I guess you can't actually <laughs> bet on an exact number of stage wins if there's a separate market. But I'm going to say just under. I'm, I'm, I think they're going to win about 45, 47. But – I think there'll be some higher quality wins in there. Uh, I think there'll be some more World Tour stage races, potentially a Grand Tour. I think there'll be a GC podium, not that that counts. And, I mean, you've got to factor in, I guess, the Olympics, will that take away from riders doing different things? Will, will Sam Bennett be able to do two Grand Tours again? I don't know. But, yeah, I think they'll win 45 wins, so just under, but I think there'll be some better races in there. And but then again, we don't know how many will be cancelled. What's a hot take you'd like to say about Quick Step now, Benji, um, before any of the racing's happened so that you can crow about it later? Okay, so hot take of the year 2021. <laughs> almost the wrong year for uh, the Kerning Quick Step is... I think that Mark Cavendish is going to win a World Tour stage. Mate, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, are, what are you doing? Come on, Mark, you can do it. <laughs> it's a reputable, it's a reputable cycling podcast. It's the preeminent. <laughs> podcast. It would be hilarious if he does. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, yeah, I hope so too. You beat but... Caleb Ewan in a 1v1. <laughs> well, yeah, on Rust, maybe. My hot take, <laughs> my hot take is that Ava Nepal wins this year by over five minutes. That's not a hot take. It's true. <laughs> no, it is a hot take because we believe that that's going to happen. You're right. But you're right. I think I'm like I'm absolutely insane for saying it, but I think he's going to yeah, win. Right. Gonna win by the Giro by like five minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm putting my money on it already. <laughs> we're going to put money on that, but we're I guess we're, we're, just, we're fanboys. We can't help ourselves. Um, and I think what do you last one, which I haven't mentioned, Alaphilippe. Do you think he's winning a monument? In 2021, you think he's going to have the the world champs, the rainbow band's curse, or not? I think he's well, his rainbow band curse. Honestly, well, you, I kind it, of started already this year, didn't it? But yeah. um, I think he's going to get past it. I think he's going to get at least one day in the yellow jersey in the Tour de France, and I think he's going to win a monument. He is, um, yeah, he's going to break that curse. I believe it. Come on, Julian, you can do it. Yeah, he'll obviously be their leader at uh, San Remo, I would say, once again. And yeah. who knows? I mean, he's I want to, I can't wait to see him on the Poggio. It's a it's one of those races where it's boring for a long time, but you know that man in the Rainbow Bands will be attacking. What if last... you Yes. What if you put Evenepoel into Milano San Remo? Would he attack on the Supressor? Nah, he'd attack on the Tercino uh, like a hundred <laughs> 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 It'd be awesome, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, he actually would. He actually would. <laughs> he probably would, yeah. You're right. All right. That's all from us on the Deconic Quick Step preview. Let us know down below your hot takes on the YouTube video. Do you think we're underrating any of the riders? I think the general tone of this podcast has been we're pretty positive on their prospects for next year, and I think they've put a pretty good team together. Once again, they've got a preeminent sprinter in Sam Bennett. It's not their fault that Jakobsen has crashed. Otherwise, they'd have two of the four best sprinters in the world right now, plus the best puncher, plus the most, probably most talented young rider, in my view. Even a pole who's also coming off the crash. That's the few question marks, whether he's yep. particularly injured or how he comes back from that. But any last thoughts on Quick Step, Benji, before we get out of here on the hour? Nope. That's about it. All right. Thanks for watching. Give us a review or a rating on your relevant podcast player. We'll see you later.